Let's talk about NASA's new plan that will send human beings to Mars in the next decade. By leveraging a strong presence on the moon, NASA will gradually expand their crewed exploration missions to Mars and even beyond. In a recent presentation on their Moon to Mars strategy, NASA heads outlined their new strategic objective moving forward, and that is to create a blueprint for a sustained human presence and exploration throughout the solar system. Which is amazing. This is what we always wanted NASA to be, bold and ambitious with a true passion for exploration. And this is more than just talk. NASA has laid out a surprisingly detailed and realistic plan for their first stage of human exploration into outer space. It all starts with the moon and sets the goal of a long duration stay on the red planet. For the first time ever, we have a step-by-step -step process of how we grow humanity's presence outward bound into the stars. As great as it is to have Elon Musk saying that he's going to build a city on Mars using giant starship rockets, he has yet to really fill in the details on how we get from point A to point B. Maybe in Elon's mind, the path is just a straight line. We blast off from here and we go set up shop there. If it actually does prove to be that easy, then that would be fantastic, but it seems unlikely at best. This NASA blueprint fills in those spaces in between with a slow, gradual upwards curve of research and development and thorough testing. It may not be flashy, but it's easily the most exciting thing NASA has released since the Apollo program. So let's talk about it. This is the Space Race. This Moon to Mars initiative is actually nothing new. It started way back under US President George Bush, and we're not talking about W. This goes back to George Bush Sr. over 30 years ago. The problem is that the initiative never had a clearly defined plan. It was just decades of bouncing back and forth from one idea to another, chasing funding, and constantly rewriting priorities to fit whatever budget they had available at the time. Modern NASA officials have concluded that procedure was not effective, obviously. So they are making a plan that unifies all aspects of NASA, every single department, every single contractor is unified on this one objective, and they are sticking to it no matter what. If money is tight, then they slow down. When money is abundant, they speed up. But they always stay on the same road, no detours. And like we said off the top, that single unified plan is their blueprint for sustained human presence and exploration throughout the solar system. The first step is the moon. They establish a new human presence on the lunar surface and in lunar orbit. Then they use the moon as a practice ground for Mars, where they test and demonstrate the technologies that will send humans beyond our own planetary system for the first time. This answers one of our biggest outstanding questions about the Artemis program. Are they going just for the sake of going, just to flex on the Chinese, or are they going to make this count? NASA is answering that with a very clear mission statement it's not going to be just there and back. It's about there and beyond. So there are four key pillars that hold up this entire blueprint. The keys to success in long-term exploration and colonization of the solar system. These are transportation, habitation, operations, and science. These will be developed on Earth, tested on the moon, and implemented to their full degree on Mars. The first step is to establish lunar infrastructure that will have crews living and operating both on the surface of the moon and in orbit around the moon. That means one crewed mission every year. Once there, we can demonstrate new systems for autonomous construction, landing vehicles, surface transportation, and sample retrieval. NASA has defined lunar operations in two stages beginning with Artemis 3 in 2025 and continuing until 2031, 
they will operate with crews of two people spending between 7 and 14 days on the surface of the moon once per year. From 2031 onward, that expands to operating crews of four people on the moon for a 30-day period once every year. During this period of lunar colonization, NASA will continue to establish their presence on Mars with robotic sample return missions and the deployment of an autonomous space station in Mars orbit. Okay, let's talk about how NASA's conceptual human mission to Mars will play out. Before people even arrive there, there will be one or more supply drops to make sure that everything these astronauts will need to survive and then return home is already there and waiting for them. The pre-deployed cargo will arrive on a 25-ton Mars lander that will contain propellant for the return ascent, it will contain a power source for the crew and mobility equipment, and there will also be a pre-deployment ascent vehicle on the surface of Mars before the crew's arrival. The main event will be two astronauts landing on Mars in a pressurized vehicle that will serve as both a habitation module and a rover vehicle. This will be their home for 30 days on the Martian surface and will support their science and exploration operations. It is important that the habitat double as a transportation vehicle because even in the reduced gravity of Mars, it will take time for the crew to recondition their bodies after months of zero gravity space flight. It will probably be a few days before the crew have regained the strength to be able to put on their spacesuits and walk on the surface of Mars. So it's important that the habitation module doubles as a rover so that they can get straight into their exploration mission without missing a beat. To get people from the Earth to Mars, NASA will develop a transit habitat that employs a hybrid of both chemical and electric propulsion stages. This will support a crew of four on the mission to Mars and back again. Two crew will remain in orbit for the full duration, while two go down to the surface. There are two mission profiles for going to Mars. One is a short stay, and the other a long stay. For the short stay mission, the outbound period will last 217 days and utilize a gravitational assist around the planet Venus to boost the spacecraft on its way. The stay on Mars will last for 30 days, and the return trip will be a grueling 403 days in deep space. There's no sugarcoating it, that will suck, but it's likely safer than spending an extended period on Mars, just until we get a little more practice at this. That adds up to a total mission duration of 650 days. For the long stay mission, the outbound period will be 210 days on a direct course from Earth to Mars. No gravitational boost required. The stay on Mars in this scenario will be 496 days. So this is a significantly longer mission and will require a lot more planning and pre-deployment. And then the return window is shortened to 210 days because the crew will be taking advantage of an ideal transfer window. Over the coming months, NASA will be releasing a series of short white papers that get into some more details on how these missions will operate. Like we said, it is NASA's operations on and around the moon over the coming decade that will set the stage for the first human missions to Mars. So here is our first look at NASA's blueprint for the Artemis program beyond the first Artemis 3 moon landing. Artemis 4 will be a simple supply mission to lunar orbit. This will deliver the habitation module to the Gateway Station. There will be no surface mission on Artemis 4. Artemis 5 will deliver more components to the Gateway. The Esprit communications and refueling module plus the station's robotic arm. There will also be a mission to the moon's surface again, this time to deliver NASA's lunar terrain vehicle. Artemis 6 will send even more infrastructure to the lunar surface. This includes an airlock system for the LTV so that the vehicle can be pressurized and also deliver the fission surface power system to the moon, which is a miniature nuclear reactor. 
Artemis 7 will be the first test of a pressurized rover on the lunar surface and will establish the first in-situ resource utilization pilot plant on the moon. This will transform lunar regolith, also known as dust and rocks, into usable resources. Artemis 8 will be the first 30-day mission for two crew members on the moon. It will also include a demonstration of NASA's upcoming nuclear propulsion system. Artemis 9 will be the first time that a crew of four people will occupy the moon at the same time. They'll spend 32 and a half days on the surface, and this mission will be the first deployment of a permanent surface habitation module. Artemis 10 is where things get a little less defined in terms of lunar operations, but this is also where the prep for the Mars missions begins. So Artemis 10 will have a lunar surface mission, but more importantly, it will deploy the Mars Cargo Stage 1. Artemis 11 is the same deal. There will be a lunar surface mission of some kind and the deployment of the Mars Cargo Stage 2. Artemis 12 is going to be a big one. In addition to a lunar surface mission, this is when the Mars 1 human lander with surface subsystems and the Transit Hab Mars ship will be delivered to the Gateway Station. During this time frame, the Gateway will have a crew of four operating for 134 days at a time. We can deduce that NASA plans to use the Gateway Station in orbit around the Moon as the send-off point for the crewed mission to Mars. The Transit Hab ship with the Mars 1 human lander will depart from the Gateway and probably make their return there as well. So there we have it. That's how NASA sends people to Mars. It won't happen quickly, and they're not talking about building a giant city of a million people or anything crazy like that but they do have a very realistic and sensible plan, which is very important for NASA because they have to pitch this idea to the US Congress and the American people as a whole to get the funding that they need to make this happen. And I can't see any reason why anyone would look at this objectively and call it a bad idea. It's going to be difficult and very expensive, but it makes sense. What do you think though? Can NASA actually make this happen? Or does Elon Musk just blow straight past them and declare himself techno king of Mars before NASA can even get close? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.